said, let me play, grab my tambourine. And what people don't really know about the tambourine, yes. the, tam the tambourine is an instrument of deliverance. Amen. It's an instrument of victory. After the children of Israel came out of Israel, the Bible records that Miriam began to play the tambourine. She began to be joyful for the deliverance. Amen. Because they have been delivered from Egypt. Amen. Glory to God. So let, I want you to know that your praise is a sign of deliverance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Your praise is a sign of deliverance. Glory to God. I know we got a preacher that's going to preach this morning. Yes, yes. But I want somebody to know that your praise is a sign of deliverance. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me let me calm myself down this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To some and introduce to others. Amen. Our own Apostle Donnie L. Davis. If you're just now joining us, we praise God for you, 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 and you. And we thank you for tuning into this service experience. Amen. Glory to God. So we welcome you. If you have a prayer, put it in the chat. Amen. We will still continue to pray while this service is going on. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I want you to just enjoy this word. Amen. Enjoy what God has to say. And the next voice that you hear right now will be none other than our apostle, Pastor Donnie L. Davis. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. You cannot praise him too much. Praise the yeah. Lord. He said if you, the word, the song said, if you praise him, he will make it all right. First, we're going to ask the first lady to go ahead and to read the scripture this morning. Uh, first, all, I will pray that you will read the scripture, and then we'll get into today's word. Praise the Lord. Pray with me, church. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we come before you this morning with the spoken word, we ask, Lord, that you would hide this old preacher behind thee so that you will be seen and heard, Father. Because we know that if you come and you are seen and heard and speak to your waiting people, all shall be made right with our souls. So, Father, we ask that you would just come and hide this old preacher and speak to your people. Because if you come and speak, Father, we know that burdens will be lifted, yokes broken. If you come, Father, troubles shall be pushed aside. If you come, Father, all shall be made well with our soul. In the name of Jesus, we ask that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be received and acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, come, Father, speak to your waiting people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. First Lady, would you read the scripture and give the, uh, 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 the, the text of, uh, uh, of, of our periscopes this morning, please? Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Good morning, Faith and Praise family. Our scripture is coming from Isaiah, 41st chapter, verses 10 through 20. We're going to emphasize 13 and, verse 13 and verse 20. And all verses are coming from the Amplified Version. A little bit different from the King James Version. So it's Isaiah 41, verses 10 through 20, and then emphasizing verses 13 and 20. And I will begin to read. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Indeed, all those who are angry with you will be put to shame and humiliated. Those who strive against you will be as nothing and will perish. You will search for those who quarrel with you but will not find them. They who war against you will be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, keep hold of your right hand. I am the Lord, who says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, you worm Jacob, you men of Israel. I will help you, declares the Lord, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. In fact, 
I have made of you a new sharp threshing implement with sharp edges. You will thresh the mountains and crush them and make the hills like chaff. You will winnow them and the wind will carry them away and the high wind will scatter them. But you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy are seeking water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them myself. I, the God of Israel, will not neglect them. I will open rivers on the barren heights and springs in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a reed pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will put the cedar in the wilderness, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive tree. I will place the juniper in the desert together with the box tree and the cypress, so that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. Now we're going to emphasize verse 13 and verse 20. Verse 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, keep hold of your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. And verse 20, so that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this, that the Holy One of Israel has created it. I've read from Isaiah, the 41st chapter, verses 10 through 20, and also emphasizing verse 13 and 20 of the Amplified Version. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his most holy word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, First Lady, for your ableness and in, in reading and the scripture so clear. I thank God for you, Elder Mike. I thank God for you, First Lady. I thank God for all that's on this call this morning. Now, allow us to just talk a little bit about this thing called God's got this. When I, when I was in the military years ago and we were given tasks that were difficult or frightening or we just did not want to do. Us GIs, we had a, a saying to kind of comfort one another. We would say, don't sweat it. We got this. I'd like to play on that topic just a little bit this morning as we talk, as we bring the word. Don't sweat it. God got this. Don't sweat it. God got this. Meaning that no matter how difficult the task, nothing is too hard for God. I believe that yeah. most of us in this day and time of our lives can agree that we all have experienced or have felt and known the biting, the biting worries called by, caused by fear and apprehensions over something, someone, or some occurrence in our walk in this life. I believe that we all have known, that we all have felt and experienced the biting agonies of disappointments, bewilderments, anxieties, sadness, and our fright in some of the days of our lives here on this world. I believe that we've all have been afraid and worried. Now, I'm not trying to prophesize today or even to predict tribulations or in anybody's days of life here on this earth. But uh, if we live long enough, 
There will be days that nobody knows the trouble that we have seen but Jesus. Most grown men and women do not want to admit that there are things or situations that make us tremble in the deepest depths of our hearts. Nevertheless, if we are honest with ourselves in the sight of God, we must admit that this COVID pandemic, for instance, with all this sickness and death, coupled with the frequent occurrences of these destructive natural disasters and storms in their powers to take everything that we have in this world to include our lives. Next to our everyday apprehensions about our personal financial situation <clears throat> and our fears about being able to properly provide for our families and, and ourselves and, and then combine that with our concerns with the everyday health and well-being of ourselves and our loved ones. I believe that all of these things have, have done a pretty good job in tearing up our peace of mind lately. Besides our, all of the four, our aforementioned circumstances, united with the nastiness, of the over practices of racial discrimination and prejudice and with their wicked companion of actual committed acts of hatred and promises of threats of more violence to come that surely follows mankind loathing of one another. All of this and more have taken a toll on our peace of mind. Almost to the point that some people have forgotten that there is a God and that Jesus said to all his people in John 14 and 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart, let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid. In short, church, Jesus said to his people, don't sweat it. God's got it. Don't sweat what you see, meaning don't worry about it. Keep your faith in me. Don't let what you see before you frighten you because Things have to happen before I come back. For the sake of illustration, I will refer to those apprehensions that I, that I spoke of that sometimes causes our heart to skip a beat and our knees to grow weak as the, let's call it the proverbial boogeyman. You remember that fantasy character? I was it fantasy. But you remember that fantasy character that, well, that, that we first learned to fear and became familiar with in our childhood? As children, some of us were sometimes told that failure to obey our parents would result in the boogeyman coming to get us. If we were bad or talked back to grown folks, of you or use bad words and so forth and so on, we were told that the boogeyman would come and get us. Well, I've been sent to this preaching time to tell somebody that we don't worry about the boogeyman today because God has brought his way to us in the name of Jesus. We don't sweat what we see it means we don't fear what's going on around us because God is still on the throne and he's got this. Nothing Man. meaning the things that can trouble us, that can trouble God's people, 
is out of God's care. Anything that you're looking at that can harm us, God is still in control. We don't have to wake up and fear go walking through that day. If you are prayed up and trusting God in your, your ways, let us be assured today in the face of all this trouble that we see around us. And in some cases, situations involving us that God promised us, God promised his people with Isaiah 41 and 13 of the Amplified Bible, for I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand. That means we're not walking in this mess alone, church. I am the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. In street language, that is all only saying, don't sweat it. Why? God got it. Just as, just as God took care of all the things that we were afraid of or anxious about all the days of our life, up to and through today, he would do the same tomorrow. Just take a few minutes, church. Just take a, a moment. Think about the troubles that you have been through. Those of us who have gone through sicknesses and wondered if we would ever leave the hospital beds again. Those of us who have watched our loved ones bear it and wondered if we could ever enjoy tomorrow. But then we arrived in this day and time and we wonder how we got over. If you just take a moment and just look back, and then you would know that it was nobody but God that has brought you to this point. God had it all the time, which means that we didn't have to sweat it. God's grace and mercy has suited our case every day that we have lived. So looking back at the evidence that God got this thing, I can say with confidence today that you should not worry. We should not worry about what's going on and coming towards us tomorrow. In other words, I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay praying up and believing that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. In other words, I'm not going to sweat tomorrow. No, we don't have to know what's going to happen to us with this upcoming months and years in this country and world. We don't have to know what's going to happen tomorrow. And we don't have to know exactly what's going to happen to us with this recession that's going through right now or with this unjustly leading court system that's in power right now. We don't even have to worry about this upcoming election that has a greater potential for violence than in the days of, rec or, 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 of rec reconstruction. The anxiety surrounding these events, along with the many adverse situations going on all around us, can be referred to as, a, as our boogeyman today. But church, 
Listen to me. Steal your heart in the power of the Lord. And know that we, but as far as we are concerned, we don't have to sweat it. Because God got it. If you are one of God's own, you know that this thing is going to work for our good. Just remember, for your peace of mind in this day and time, that the devil is a liar. Because God reassures us in Romans 8 and 24 that all things, look at that little word all, three letters, but it, it covers everything. It says that all things work together for good. To who? To them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. And trust me, church, if you love God, you will be called according to his purpose. If you obey God, you will be called according to his purpose. If you want a God, you will be called according to his purpose. What is your boogeyman today? Whatever it is, God does not want us to live worried, feel anxious, and fearful lives. There is no anxietiness or fear so overcoming that God cannot defeat its power on us. Our boogeyman is no match for God's power in the name of Jesus. The prophet Nahum proclaimed in Nahum 1 and 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. In other words, church, don't sweat it. God got this. Our fears and anxieties are a tool of Satan that Satan uses to discourage us and defeat our attempts, our attempts to, to live fulfilling lives while building and expanding the kingdom of God. As Christians, we are reminded that Satan can be rebuked and his influence in our lives can be eliminated because greater is he that is in us then he that is in the world, the word of the for the people of God today is fear not or don't sweat the troubles that you see all around us today. Why? For God says, I am with thee. In other words, God assures those of us who are his, he assures us that he got this on our behalf, meaning the people of God behalf. Today, there are many people who see the, red, the ravages of the pandemic that's still involved in our society. There are many people who see the rapid deterioration of our social order and the hatred in the hearts of men and women. Many people have seen these things and have become overly afraid. World events, world events trying to destroy our peace of mind and our faith in God. The world is headed towards 666 prophecies and many are afraid that all the pieces are falling into place for the rise of the Antichrist as predicted in scripture. Crime is rising while interest in the things of God is falling. Jail cells are filling up while church rows are shrinking. Murders and killings are all over the world. All over the world have increased at an alarming rate. More souls than ever before are dropping out of life without a concern of the coming eternal judgment. Some people 
are so afraid and anxious that even the, the that, that even nature strikes fear in their hearts and in their lives. When they see the summers are getting hotter and the winters are getting colder, they feel the hell dropping out of nowhere on sunshiny days and city collapses as earthquakes rumble. Isaiah told Judah not to be upset when they saw signs of Persia rising because God would be moving in the plan. In other words, don't sweat it because God got this. Don't sweat, sweat all the troubles that you see around you. Don't let it get on your nerves and make you so nervous that you're afraid to sleep at night. Because God got this church. Jesus tells the New Testament church in similar terms not to be upset when we hear of wars and rumors of wars, when we hear of earthquakes in diver places and famine and pestilence. In other words, pestilence is another word for pandemic and sickness because these are the beginning of things that must come. Others around us who do not understand the plan of God may allow themselves to be overly upset what they are about what they see. But we who love God and trust God must fear not and be not dismayed as we are assured that God got this. Still in times of trouble or fear, many so-called Christians still seek out soup sales and so-called Christians, now I'm talking about people who say they are people of God. Rather than reading the Bible and trusting God, they go look for soup sales, which are fortune tellers, palm readers, witch doctors, quacking hacks, voodoo and hoodoo people. They go look for daily horoscope readings and try to get their news for the day. In other words, they tried to find something that we used to call way back in the day when I was a, a youngster. Get our mojo working. Or take a little nip and a sip of the hard stuff. Or, 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 or take a hit of that crazy cigarette light to try to calm our nerves. Yeah. Our yeah. fears. But let me tell you something. Whenever you get down to the bottom of that bottle, it's your troubles are still with you if you don't have God. Somebody ought to say amen. When you take that last puff on that crazy cigarette, your troubles are still with you if God's not with you. Somebody ought to say amen. When you go to the hoodoo worker or to that voodoo worker, they cannot put a spell on you that can, that, that they can bless you. All they can do is guess and what's going on? But what's going to happen is going to happen to you in a way. Don't get too excited about the rise in sexual immorality. Don't you in, in, in evils that you see. Don't get too excited about the lying and the cheating and the stealing and the drunkenness all, and all kind of sinful behavior, even when you find those evils reaching those that you know and love because it's been prophesied in 2 Timothy 3 that it is prophesied that in the latter days when men would become men would become lovers of themselves and without natural affection. And before we can claim what God has in store for us, all these things must be. Don't be too perturbed about the increase in emptiness uh, of pews in the church and the lack of church attendance all over the land. As God has said, as Jesus has said in the final years before his coming, that there will be a great falling away. Somebody said that skipping church is the, is the beginning of, of spiritual decline. And Jesus said that these things must be. I don't know what you think about it, but I decided 
that David was right when he declared, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't get too disturbed because I know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord according to his purpose. Maybe that's why the songwriter wrote, I don't know, I do not know how long it will be or what the future has for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, I'll get home someday. As we ponder this topic, don't sweat. God got this. Let us be mindful that there are many people who see the unfolding of the events around them that are filled with dismay and just plain fear. This is uh, in this context. Fear is different from dismay. Fear signifies terror, but dismay implies disillusion. When you are dismayed, you lack the courage that it takes to go on. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to stop believing in the Lord, in our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants us to stop believing that God is real. When you are discouraged, you lack the vision it takes to see your way clear. When you are dismayed, that you lack the hope that it takes to believe that no matter how bad it gets, the Lord will make a way somehow. When you are dismayed, your spirits get low and you hang your head in defeat and you stop trying to move forward in the Lord. When you are dismayed, your smiling face is replaced by the frowns of doubt. But I heard the Lord say, be not dismayed, for I am the all-powerful God. In other words, don't sweat it. God got this, for I am he who rounded the earth in the palm of my hand. God says, don't sweat it. He's got this, because he is the one that sprinkled the night with the moon and the stars. God is the one that batted his eyes and made the lightning flash. So don't sweat it. God got this. God clapped his hands and made the thunder roll. Don't sweat it. God got this. God hollered out the valleys and built and bowed up the mountaintops. For I am that God. That God, he said. I am that God. So I got this and I will strengthen thee. Brothers and sisters, these are some perilous times in which we live, but we should not worry. We should not be anxious and we should not be fearful and we should not be dismayed. Don't sweat the small stuff. There is uh, nothing that God cannot fix. Uh, Satan may be in the south for a while, but remember, God is still on the throne and Satan is about to be thrown into the lake of fire. Hatred might be all around us, but Jesus is still trapping out the village, the village where the grapes of wrath are stored. Sin may be on the rampage, but Jesus is still Lord of Lord. The world may be extremely wicked, but remember, Jesus is still King of Kings. As our message concludes for the day, remember that in this life, we are to expect trouble as the word of God tells us in Job 14 and 1. Man, that means man and woman uh, that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. So yes, we are to expect trouble, but then God proclaims that we do not have to sweat the trouble or uh, uh, be concerned about the trouble. Because Psalms 46 and 1 tells us, He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Somebody ought to say amen. God got this. So if you feel your world is getting out of hand, just remember what the little children of yesteryear used to sing. He's got the whole world in his hand. I've come by to tell somebody, God got this. When the turbulence of life storm rises, don't sweat it. God got this. It's in his hands. When the crisis of living attacks your peace of mind, don't sweat it. 
God got this. It's in his hands. When you give you in your way, get difficult and hard to travel. Don't sweat it. God got this. It's in his hands when your burdens seem too heavy to bear. Uh, fear not. God got this. Uh, when, uh, and remember that what Jesus said in John 14 and 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Uh, when trouble is near and the trials and tribulations are close at hand, remember God said, fear not, I got this. Uh, uh, fear not and be not dismayed. Somebody ought to help me here. Are you afraid? Then God said, don't be afraid. He's got this. There will never be a burden that God cannot lighten. Don't sweat it. He's got this. There will never be a problem that God cannot solve. Don't sweat it. God got this. There will never be a difficulty that God cannot resolve. Don't sweat it. He's got this. There will never be a loneliness that God cannot comfort. God got this. There will never be a battle that God cannot fight. There will never be a weakness that God cannot strengthen. There will never be a question that God cannot answer. There will never be a situation that God cannot handle. Because Jesus is the lily of the valley. Jesus is the bright morning star. Jesus who died on Calvary and he rose on that third day. Jesus got this. He defeated everything to include death. And he got this for us. So as I come to a conclusion, Jesus rose early one Sunday morning so that we don't have to fear. And he sold this way upon his appearance to fear not. He's got this. And he is the supreme defeater of fear. Jesus is the Lord of all. And God got this. So I'll leave you with these few words. Whatever you're going through, whatever troubles you will face, fear not. Don't sweat it. God got this. And nothing's impossible for God. Nothing. Let me repeat that. Nothing. Is impossible for God. So don't sweat it. God got this. Whatever your this is, God's got it. Pray with me. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done and everything that you have sent me to say. Thank you, Father, as I looked out over this earth and over this world this past week. You told me to tell your people, don't sweat it. God got it. In Jesus' name, we pray that you will lighten the loads of worry on somebody's heart and mind, that you will excite the, 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 the excitement of being a child of God and know that we'll be able to walk over the trials and the tribulations and the troubles that the world might try to throw at us because we are a people of God and we walk by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for that word. We thank you, Father, for the encouragement. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. We ask, Lord, that you would just lighten somebody's heart and load and let them know that you are God all by yourself. And that whatever we're going through down here this year, don't sweat it. You got this. Amen and amen.